The End of Science Fiction by Lise Mueller. This is not fantasy, this is our life. We are the characters who have invaded the moon, who cannot stop their computers. We are the gods who can unmake the world in seven days. Both hands are stopped at noon. We are beginning to live forever in lightweight aluminum bodies with numbers stamped on our backs. We dial our words like Muzak. We hear each other through water. The genre is dead. Invent something new. Invent a man and a woman naked in a garden. Invent a child that will save the world. A man who carries his father out of a burning city. Invent a spool of thread that leads a hero to safety. Invent an island on which he abandons the woman who saved his life with no loss of sleep over his betrayal. Invent us as we were before our bodies glittered and we stopped bleeding. Invent a shepherd who kills a giant. A girl who grows into a tree. A woman who refuses to turn her back on the past and has changed to salt. A boy who steals his brother's birthright and becomes the head of a nation. Invent real tears. Hard love. Slow spoken, ancient words. Difficult as a child's first steps across a room. Welcome to Lit Poetry and our discussion today of the poem The End of Science Fiction by Liesl Mueller. Liesl Mueller was born in Hamburg, Germany in 1924 and was forced to flee to America from Nazi Germany as a teenager with her family at the age of 15 due to threats to her family's welfare. She attended Evansville College and completed graduate studies at Indiana University. In the 1960s, she lived with her husband in Illinois, where they raised their family. As well as being a poet, she taught at the University of Chicago, Elmhurst College and Goddard College. Mueller won the American National Book Award in 1981, the Pulitzer Prize in 1997 for her work Alive Together, New and Selected Poems, from which this particular poem is taken. On winning the Pulitzer Prize, her work was described as a testament to the miraculous power of language to interpret and transform our world. It is a testament that invites readers to share her vision of experiences we all have in common. Sorrow, tenderness, desire, the revelations of art and mortality. The hard, dry smack of death against the glass. Mueller also won the Carl Sandburg Award and a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship. She died in Chicago in 2020 at the ripe old age of 96. A discussion of the poem. At its heart, the end of science fiction closely examines the extent to which our world has changed and evolved over time, especially on a technological level, but not necessarily for the better. Indeed, Mueller uses a vast array of historical and biblical allusions to illustrate and discuss her perspective on the state of today's world, which according to her has ventured well past the expectations and capabilities of science. In this poem, it's as if something fundamental has been lost in life, and that people have become trapped inside a kind of science fiction genre, especially in areas such as medicine, travel and technology. Indeed, it is against this background that Mueller argues in this poem that humanity needs to invent something new to save ourselves from this dead genre that is rotting us from the inside out. It is interesting to note here that the new inventions Mueller puts forward as an antidote to our current sickness is actually a mixture of historical and biblical allusions and references, so not actually new at all. 
However, she presents our need to go back to these ancient stories as examples of new ideas because we have moved so far away from those foundational stories in the first place that we would benefit greatly from the wisdom they bring. In particular, she is pointing to the deep existential and philosophical realities older stories grapple with in terms of our human condition, which in our modern world of superficial science fiction has become so neglected. In her poem, Mueller is hinting that the genre of science fiction is coming to an end. It is no longer fiction, rather it is our lived reality. We are becoming like the futuristic beings described in science fiction stories. As such, there is a dystopic feeling that Mueller draws out in her poem, which connects to how science fiction is often depicted in feature films like Blade Runner. She reinforces this pessimistic feeling by pointing out that we are on the path of replacing our bodies with artificial ones, thus being the generation that allows advances in technology to get drastically out of hand. Mueller suggests there is something unnatural taking place in our world. And the poet warns about this from the very first line. This is not fantasy. This is our life. The new inventions Mueller puts forward as a corrective to our modern dilemma are actually historical and biblical allusions and references to ancient stories, as I've already pointed out. So she isn't exactly talking about new inventions at all. However, she is presenting these examples as new ideas because we have moved so far from the fundamental wisdoms that returning to them would be comparable to a kind of rebirth or reawakening. The goal of this poem is to explore the choices humans have made to end up in the dysfunctional and potentially catastrophic situation we are in today. In short, Mueller explores how we have a tendency to put our hope in the future without drawing on the wisdom of the past in order to guide us towards true meaningful progress. Moreover, this poem also tells us that science, which was supposed to aid mankind into the future, has actually in some ways hindered us. For example, the existence of better medicine has provided us with an overpopulation problem, you could argue. And the industrial revolution has also led to things such as global warming. Science could also be said to have led to our ability through nuclear war to be gods who can unmake the world in seven days. And indeed, this is not fantasy, this is our life. Mueller here is pointing out that our abuse of science means we seek to exploit the world around us rather than live with it in harmony. Thus she mentions that we have invaded the moon in order to exploit it. Added to this, in our increasingly virtual lives, we become characters rather than real human beings. We are virtual slaves who cannot stop their computers. In this fantasy land, we tend to invent curated images of ourselves to present to the world through our many digital platforms. The living forever in lightweight aluminum bodies, therefore, is probably a reference to the smartphones that we carry around with us as extensions of our own selves. Overall, the emotion evoked from this poem is one of resignation, nostalgia, as well as an underlying sadness. The line, we dial our words like Muzak, refers to the bland pre-recorded background music one hears in elevators and other public places, thus making the reader think of conversations that are uninteresting and boring, to the point that no one is hearing each other, hence the line, we hear each other through water. This poem also sounds nostalgic because when the poet mentions a spool of thread leading a hero to safety, the poet is actually referencing Greek mythology where King Minos' daughter fell in love with the Greek hero Theseus and gave him a spool of thread that he let unwind through the labyrinth so that he wouldn't lose his path. Theseus managed to kill the Minotaur and uses the thread to get out of the labyrinth and finally escape, leaving the besotted princess behind. Referencing this particular myth in this poem shows that the, the poet was trying to evoke an image of sadness and despair from the reader. There is also a reference to another Greek myth of Myrna, whom was transformed from a myrrh tree after falling in love and sleeping with the Greek god Sinrius. 
Another example would be the line, a woman who refuses to turn her back on the past and is turned to salt. This line refers to the Bible when God destroys the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of people's sins and debauchery, with the only people to escape being Lot, his wife, and their two daughters. They were told to go quickly and get out and not look back. Lot's wife looks back and is turned into a pillar of salt. In all these references to deep and powerful ancient stories, Mueller points to a rich vein of tradition we neglect at our own peril, a tradition that can serve to prevent us from repeating the mistakes of the past and to better understand who we actually are. In the end, Mueller shows how we are in fact becoming the science fiction genre itself, a bland, monotonous wasteland. The genre of science fiction is dead as it is no longer fiction, it is our reality. The many rich biblical allusions in the poem, such as those to Adam and Eve, the birth of Jesus, David and Goliath, Lot's wife, and the ancient literary allusions to works such as Aeneas from the works of Virgil, as well as mythology such as Apollo and Daphne and Theseus and the Minotaur are being lost to us. Mueller calls us to invent something new, but in you she is ironically suggesting that something new is actually the ancient things that we have erroneously neglected over the course of history. Rather than discover something new through science, Mueller is calling on us therefore to recover or rediscover the treasures already hidden in our midst, dormant, lying deep within the skin of our culture. Mueller is calling for us to step away from fantasy and illusion and into reality, into a world of real tears instead of the manufactured ones we commonly see on reality TV. Hard love, a type of love that is more about actions than feelings and ancient words that are more about wisdom than just mere knowledge and facts. Thank you.